Hey, everybody. I think we should just get started. Uh, Dan, how's it going? Going well. How about yourself? You know, I can't complain. It's a beautiful day here in Phoenix, Arizona. Not so great up north, but how is it like in Huntsville? Yeah, Huntsville, Alabama couldn't be more beautiful right now. Yeah, Seven the degrees and nice and clear. The rest of the world's jealous. Well, um, why don't we just get started? I um, just want to introduce Dan DeFay. He's our Chief Security Officer for North Star Technology Group. Uh, I know you probably have a slide for this, but I um, wanted to preempt it because I think if anybody um, deserves an introduction, it's you, Mr. DeFay. So I'll let you take it from here. All right. Thank you, Ken. Sounds great. Yeah, so um, for those that don't know, uh, you and I got together uh, right before 2024, and we brought our two teams together and uh, uh, couldn't be happier since we did this. Now we've uh, got a whole set of law firms throughout the country that we protect. We've got 32 employees now and 27 cybersecurity and IT professionals. And uh, now we get to uh, extend our reach throughout the country, helping more law firms and companies, you know, stay safe from cyber attacks and downtime. All right. So for those of you um, that joined us, you know, we thank you for being here and, and we want to just go ahead and jump right into this and, uh, First of all, thank you for taking the first step to join this webinar and, and learn more about cybersecurity. And we truly believe here at North Star that everything needs to start with uh, a cybersecurity risk assessment. This is uh, where we basically get to take a look at all the risk that's in your firm and uh, decide what steps need to be taken next in order to reduce that risk for you. Uh, so whether you have an IT department, you know, you have cybersecurity insurance, you know, you have probably some things in place, maybe you don't have any things, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. The risk assessment helps us figure out where you are at this point in time so we can make a plan and help get everything more secure for you in the future. And some of you, uh, especially on a smaller law firm size, you may think that uh, you don't really have much to worry about, that they're not going to come after you, but that's not really what we're seeing. Uh, in fact, there's probably more attacks now on small and mid-sized law firms than there ever has been. And it kind of makes sense. You know, if you're an attacker, <clears throat> you know, would you, you know, waste your resources on a big law firm that spends uh, a lot of money on cybersecurity and, and can really defend easily against your attacks? Or would you go after the ones that don't really have anything in place and that you have a really good chance to uh, get a foothold and, and do some damage? So, you know, that's what we're seeing. Uh, ransomware is still a huge issue. Uh, even more of an issue is the business email compromise attacks that we're seeing. Uh, so the, the risk assessment, uh, it, it really helps bring a lot of things to light that you normally wouldn't see. Um, one of the things that, that we like to point out, you know, are, are some of the failed login attempts that we'll see. You know, this was a, an example of a recent risk assessment we did for a law firm. Uh, this is just a small law firm, uh, less than 10 users and in 90 days, there were over 22,000 failed login attempts for this person. And so what you're seeing here, each of those red dots on the map, that, that means that somebody has the correct username and they just don't have the right password yet, but they're still constantly trying, thus the 22,000 failed attempts. Um, another thing that we, we typically hear from a lot of smaller law firms is that they think that because they're in the cloud, they're using maybe Google Workspace or Microsoft 365, that Microsoft or Google are taking care of all of their cybersecurity. And that's just not the case. What you, you're seeing here on the screen is a, an example of the uh, shared responsibility matrix that Microsoft has for its customers. And you can see 
really all Microsoft is responsible for is providing uh, a vehicle uh, to put your data in and, and for you to you know process that data. It's your responsibility to make sure that all the doors are locked, that all of the data is backed up, and that uh, only the proper people are gaining access. That's your responsibility, not Microsoft. So uh, Google has one that's very similar. Uh, any thoughts on this, Ken? No, and I think I think the big thing with this is people honestly believe that Microsoft is just taking care of everything. I mean, I know you made that point, but I can't reiterate how important it is to understand that there is shared responsibility. Um, you know, this started a little while ago where uh, Microsoft noted that they weren't doing ex extra backups, right, o outside of retention for, say, email. And so, of course, going into this, you start to learn that there's a lot of things that Microsoft it does not do when it comes to, to securing and, and, and creating these protections. And so ultimately it, it's, it's up to you, it's up to us to, to do that. Yeah, and, and we even have some of our engineers that used to work for Microsoft and uh, they've told me some horror stories where you know they, they were working for Microsoft, got a phone call that they needed data restored and Microsoft did not have that data. You know, so it is, it is a real thing that, you know, Microsoft isn't always there, you know, to, to even get the backups. So uh, they do maintain some copies uh, of backups, but, you know, it's your responsibility to, to have something in place to back that up uh, in addition to what Microsoft is doing. Um, so, you know, one of the things uh, that, you and I have seen a lot whenever we do the risk assessments, Ken. Um, we, we typically see if there is anything that's in place, it's usually only one or two things, usually antivirus and a firewall. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, what, I don't know, Ken, you've been doing this as long as me since before 2000, um, you know, antivirus and firewall has been around since then. And, and that's pretty much been the, only thing you really could get for cybersecurity up until maybe what, 2016, 2015? Yeah. Um, and yeah, no, I know I couldn't agree more. I mean, I, you know, for, in my history, I kind of started on the compliance side, right? So even before starting Northstar, I worked for a large nonprofit healthcare organization. So we kind of started with that HIPAA compliance stuff that, that happened even around 2006. Um, and there really wasn't much you could do outside of, as you mentioned, firewalls antivirus and then your governance stuff, right? Your written policy and, and procedure about what people are, are okay and what they're not okay to do. Um, so yeah, things have changed, man. Threats have yeah. um, accelerated for sure. Yeah, and we're, and we're not downplaying the importance of antivirus and firewall. Those those are still very important. Uh, it's just that, you know, if, if that's what you consider your cybersecurity, uh, that, that's not enough these days. Um, so we, we like to take the approach of the more modern cybersecurity system that really centers around our security operations center. And, and then we kind of have everything feeding into it so we can have a real time view of what's going on in the environment. So uh, we have, you know, close to about 30 different services that we run uh, on the devices and the Microsoft or Google tenant. Uh, on the domain, you know, there's there's a lot of different things that we're looking for and checking uh, for the for the customers that we support. And um, you know, if you don't have most of these things in place, uh, it's going to be very easy for an attacker to do some damage to your firm. Yeah, so uh, Ken, you want to speak to this a little bit? I mean, I know uh, we, we brought our companies together and, and mm -hmm. I brought in a lot of law firms, especially on the West Coast in New York and other places, but uh, you've been doing this a, a long time as well. Yeah, um, so we, you know, North Star Technology Group and Smart Firm IT Dance Company, we, we came together in November. Um, prior to that, of course, uh, I, I own North Star Technology Group, and we have a sister company called Do North Information Security that also does a lot in, in the compliance area. Um, we've done, in that number, 28 different states. I, I think it's at least up to 33 now. Um, 
but we we do cybersecurity risk assessments for organizations of all different sizes um, and all different um, industries. Uh, Dan and I, are, of course, are, are co-authors, um, ironically, of the same book. Um, and and I, I mean, we knew each other prior to to uh, to doing that, but uh, we also helped write the the book Cyber Attack Prevention. Yeah. Uh, we do. We have a big team now. Right. Um, we're all over. Um, I think what do we have like 27 cybersecurity technicians? Um, we're in, in a bunch of different states. Um, and and we we focus a lot on law firms. I think Dan, we have like 50, 60, just you know, just you guys. So we we definitely understand the challenges, right, that the legal industry faces and um, and we're here to help. Yeah, thank you. Uh so Today, you know, the, the main agenda here is that uh, we, we really do think that if your firm has never had a cybersecurity risk assessment, that you need one as soon as possible. Uh, so we're going to kind of walk you through what that looks like if you decide to go with us on, on doing one of these. Um, typically, the timeline and, and what to expect, and then uh, basically the next step if you want to get started. Uh, so Ken, why, why should they listen to us? Well, I mean, I, I, I hope we've established that we have some credibility, right? I mean, I think that's the first thing, right? You want to make sure that you're working with somebody that, that has seen this, um, you know, and as your, your slide suggests, this happens all the time. We've, we've actually worked with organizations that have gone through the worst part of cybersecurity breach. So we've, we've helped. Um, you know, organizations of, of different sizes that have, have been breached. We've, we've worked with our cyber liability insurance provider. We've done we've gone through the incident response. We've coordinated forensics. Um, we've seen organizations lose a ton of money, and we just don't want that to happen to you guys. Yeah, and, and I just want to point out, too, that, you know, I, I know many of the folks listening are probably, you know, that they think, you know, hey, I've got a full backup, you know, I, I, I'm going to be okay if something happens. But the, the attacks have really evolved. First of all, uh, the really good attackers, they're going to find out where your backups are and delete them before they even launch the attack. Secondly, they no longer just try to lock up your systems and force you to pay a ransom. They actually steal your data and then threaten to release it to the public. Uh, in order to get a ransom. So, you know, things have gotten a lot nastier and uh, th that's why we really think it's important for you to really understand what your risk is. Yeah, and, and just to add on to that point about um, even um, attacking your, your backups, right? Uh, that That's why, you know, a, a cybersecurity risk assessment is so important, right? To understand your risk. Uh, we helped an organization, they were a, they were a regional cloud computing company that had a, a data breach that uh, ransomware was was detonated and it not only affected customer uh, data, but it also affected their backups. And so this organization actually had to go through a process of negotiating ran uh, a ransom payment. And, and so like the worst possible scenario is like, well, I've got my backups and you might, right? And that, and that may be a layer, right, of recoverability. Uh, but it is so important to really, really understand to make sure that those backups are, are are secure. And that's just one of several things, right, that we want to take a peek at. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so what is a cybersecurity risk assessment? You know, that's that's what you may be asking. We're, we're trying to answer that here. Uh, for me, in my opinion, it's for us to really find out what is unknown. You know, if we just ask you questions about what your risk is, you know, you're going to have a list of things that, that you think are risky. We already kind of have a, a, a preset uh, thought in mind about what the risks are that you're facing, but we really just don't know until we take a look. So, so for us, we really have to go through all your systems. We have to kind of monitor things. We have to make sure and do a cyber sweep and, and really make sure that you're not currently compromised. You know, a lot of people, you know, don't realize how easy it is for somebody to compromise their system and go undetected. Uh, so that that's really our first priority when we do this. Um, <clears throat> it also helps with uh, regulations. You know, 
even law firms, you know, you may not have any direct regulations that you're dealing with, but your some of your clients do. You know, maybe if you're if you're doing um, legal work for a healthcare entity, you may have to uh, adhere to some of the HIPAA regulations that are out there. So, you know, r really part of the risk that that you're facing are, are what compliance frameworks apply to your firm. And that's part of the things that we identify in the risk assessment as well. Um, and really, you know, protecting your assets uh, for, for most law firms, that's going to be the client files. You know, we like to take a look at that, see what, what's in there, how easily, easily those things can be accessed and possibly stolen. Um, and, and honestly, one of the worst things about a breach is really just the downtime. And that's what people really don't understand. Like the moment a breach happens, you cannot access your client's files. You can't access your email sometimes. Um, you know, you basically can't bill anything when, when this happens. So that, that can get very costly, very fast. All right, so the, the framework that we follow is you know, basically four areas. We like to take a look at your people and, and do whatever we can to protect them, uh, protect the business processes that you have in place, protect the technology that you're utilizing, and most importantly, protect the data. Uh, so, so we really kind of gear our risk assessment at looking at these four areas. So <clears throat> in protecting the people, uh, you know, the law firm business email compromise is really on the rise. And, and a lot of times, you know, this can happen even when you have controls in place to prevent this, like multi-factor authentication is a, is a common one. Well, there's, there's a way, you know, if, if somebody sends you a phishing link and it's bad enough, that phishing link can actually steal the MFA or access token that's on your computer and, and allow the attacker to log in from another location without you even knowing it. You know, so, so there's a lot of things that people don't understand that, you know, just clicking on the wrong link in a matter of seconds can cause a lot of damage for your firm. Um, <clears throat> when it comes to the process, you know, wire fraud is one of the biggest ones uh, Ken, did you you had a story about this? I think that was really interesting. Yeah, and, and I know it's not um, legal related, right? But um, a, a lot of organizations, regardless of industry, take advantage of you know wiring funds. And and we worked with a mortgage company that uh, had essentially it was a business email compromise that started everything. And so this mortgage company that was working with. Um, some of their customers to get funds you know, into escrow for the purchases of, of homes. And a woman uh, actually was um, provided fraudulent wire instructions after the business email compromise allowed a bad guy to send her emails that looked like it was coming from the mortgage broker. And so she ended up wiring like $110,000 of all of her, her, um, your down payment and closing cost money to to the bad guy. Yeah. And so, you know, this there's many things that 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 went wrong here. You know, there's some technical stuff there, there's some security awareness training um, you know, issues. There is process, right, of how um organizations go about passing on these instructions and how they go about confirming. But yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a bad situation. So process is important. How, how you actually go through the steps of validating, verifying the, the people that you're working with and, and exchanging money with. Yeah. And especially on the wire fraud, the, the fraudulent wire transfers that we've seen, um, you know, a lot of that has nothing to do with technology. We like, we couldn't stop that even if you, you know, we had, anything technologically in place, you know, it's really uh, an employee's decision to send those funds or not. Mm -hmm. And so it's really good to have that process dialed in and have some checks and balances there. Um, all right, so, so when it comes to protecting the technology, you know, this is very important uh, and we've seen this. Uh, Ken's actually, you know, 
he actually knows firsthand about a, a, a hospital that uh, got hit with ransomware and, and they're, they have, they basically are in the process of closing their doors, um, you know, and, and, I th and you've also dealt with a, a cloud provider that got hit with it also. Yeah. Um, so re regarding the, the regional cloud provider, we talked a little bit about that, or I, I alluded to it before. One additional point I wanted to make is in order to, they had their, if you remember that they had their backups in, uh, actually encrypted by the ransom um, where as well. And what a lot of people don't understand is, you know, depending on the insurance policy you have, if you have insurance, you may be responsible for fronting any ransom payment ahead of time. And in this case, this cloud provider had to pay like $140,000. And so they had to front that money. And then only after a post breach investigation and a reimbursement request, were they able to get the, that money um, refunded or reimbursed to them. Um, but regarding c companies closing, I mean, this happens all the time, right? And, and often it's the it's the straw that finally breaks the camel's back, right? And so we worked with an organization in, in Illinois that had it was a hospital. They had a data breach. They were already somewhat struggling, um, and then this just crippled them, right? Because they uh, they ended up having so much expense to deal with this this breach between legal forensics communication. They're dealing with all all the stuff with compliance that they ended up just just closing their doors. Um, and, and so all of this stuff is, is so important because we've seen this happen and, and from the worst possible scenario, I'll come like closing your doors. Uh, we just don't want that to happen to anybody. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's, it's, it's a really big problem right now. Um, yeah. And then on, on protecting the data that that same hospital you mentioned, you know, they, they were down for a long time. <laughs> And, and I've seen this with law firms also, you know, the thing is, when it comes to the data, there's no cyber liability policy. There's really nothing that can get your data back from a criminal once it's stolen. So I just want you to think about that. I mean, you, you know, you really, in my opinion, if, if you're running a law firm, you've really got to be doing everything you can to make sure your client data doesn't get into the wrong hands. You know, the cyber liability policy will be super helpful, you know, when all of those clients start to sue you, you know, because their data got out, you know, or, or other things like that happen. But as far as getting the data back, it, 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 that's not what, you know, cyber insurance is there for. It's just there to help you help compensate you for the loss. Yeah, and I want to just uh, add to, to that bullet point about six weeks of downtime. It, it, you know, that was a, a different story, right? But the organization had a ransomware attack that pretty much affected all of their, their workstations, their servers. I think it was like 140 workstations, a pile of servers. And this organization had very, very good backups, not only locally, but in the cloud. But even so, just the, the time it takes to make sure right that you are restoring from a data point that's not infected, just the process of doing enough forensics, right, where you feel comfortable and confident that if I restore to this date, that I'd still don't have, you know, malware introduced into the environment yeah. just takes time, right? Yeah, and, when, you, when you've got hundreds of endpoints, yeah. that's where, that's where the, the, real, the real expense comes in because a forensic investigation is the only way you're going to determine at what point in time can you actually do the restore where the, those backups when, if you restore a backup that was hit, now you've got to start over again. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. It's terrible. Yep. So, um, so when it comes to the risk assessment, you know, this is kind of what it looks like. You, you just basically sign up for a cyber strategy session with me. Uh, I'm going to, you know, go through some questions with you, get to learn a little more about your firm. Uh, if you want to move forward, we we start with the risk assessment. Uh, this process, depending on the size of your firm, can take anywhere from two weeks to six weeks. Um, and then uh, what we like to do then is, uh, you know, interview all the just all of the um, decision makers that are in the company. You know, we like to go through and, and 
assess everything from a technical standpoint and also from the process. And then we're going to schedule a time to go through those findings with you. Uh, and, and at the end of those findings, we're going to have some recommendations for you and, and have a, a plan in place to start remediating all of these issues. Um, <clears throat> so like I said earlier, cybersecurity insurance, uh, we think that that's a critical component in your overall risks risk uh, mitigation strategy, but there's some things that it won't do. Uh, it, it will not you know, get your data back. And it, and it also has its own set of requirements. You know, every, every, I have not seen a policy out there that doesn't have some kind of checklist that they send to the customer and ask, are you doing this, this, and this? What controls do you have in place to make sure that we minimize the, uh, the size of a breach. Uh, you know, and, and the other thing we're seeing now, especially with the change in geopolitics, you know, the, the, there's acts of war that can be excluded. So if the attacker happens to be a nation state, you know, the, the insurance company can get out of paying that claim due to the, that being an act of war. Uh, any thoughts on that, Ken? No, but the, just the fact that acts of war Paul, uh, uh, um, exceptions exist is scary enough, right? Because how do you determine if somebody overseas is doing it, uh, yeah. really, you know, in context with war or they just happen to live in, in Russia? Right, <laughs> right. Because that's the thing. These these attackers are everywhere yeah. across the world, right? So, you know... <laughs> It's just, to me, it's like, oh, wow, now, you know, you got to worry about who the attacker is, whether you're going to get paid or not. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you may think that your current IT department or, you know, IT service provider has you covered. And, um, you know, we've never done a risk assessment where we didn't find problems. You know, there, there's always something that's, you know, can be improved upon. Uh, so... You know, just keep that in mind. Um, so again, you can you can try to do this yourself. Um, you know, or or you can bring in some experts like us, and, and you know, we'll take a thorough look and really just help you see what your risk really is. Uh, any thoughts on that, Ken? No, and you know, and, and again all of these things, you know, you have an IT team possibly, right? Um, all of the things that we're talking about is help helping you validate or verify that this stuff is, is being taken care of. Um, if you know you're not taking care of it, of course, this is the first step. If you think it's being taken care of, this is also a very valuable step, right? To be able yeah. to say, hey, yeah, I, I'm paying for this. It's actually getting done. I've had a third party come in and, and take a look at this. Um, yeah. And, and so I, I just, I can't stress enough how important it is to know where you stand. Yeah. And, and what we find from a lot of IT departments is that, you know, everybody just assumes, oh, IT is taking care of that. Mm -hmm. well, you know, your IT department may not have nearly the cybersecurity budget that they need. And the only way to find that out is really to do a risk assessment. Yeah. And in addition to that, um, you know, technology and IT um, have, have have evolved, right? Where there is a distinction now, a little bit of a separation that that's occurred. Where you know, when we were first talking about when we first started in this industry, it was all under one roof, right? Roof, am I pronouncing that <laughs> right? Um, right where it was capacity planning and. Um, availability and all of the stuff, right, that we know IT is for, and then also security and protecting. Now we kind of have this separation, right? We've got IT and you have cy cybersecurity. And so a lot of IT providers or even internal IT people, employees, right, are pretty good, right, at that first part, right? They know how to build up systems and give you access and make sure that, you know, that it's, it's performing well. Um, but not everybody has the knowledge and experience, right, to protect those assets. So that's yeah. why this is important to, to understand that gap. Yeah. And, and, you know, just so you know, Ken, I mean, 
you know, here in Alabama, a roof is what is on top of my house. Rough is like, uh, it's the language that dogs speak. I'm not aware, I, or nor am I understanding what you're saying. In this moment. <laughs> um, so, you know, here's what it's like to, to work with us. Um, you know, we, we, we really do have a mission to protect our customers uh, to the fullest. And, and really, you know, there's no project or any type of IT work that we engage in where we don't do a risk assessment to, um, to get started with a, com with a company or law firm. Um, you know, we just can't take the risk ourselves. You know, there's so many law firms that are out there that just are already compromised and don't know it. And, you know, we, we really want to help you figure out, you know, whether that's you, you know, or, or whether you are doing everything that you can to protect your client's data. You know, that, that, that at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. And, and we don't want to see any law firms closing their doors because, you know, they're not taking the right steps to protect themselves. Um, so... If you would like to uh, explore this further with us, uh, feel free to go to info.northstar-tg.com and there you can book a meeting with me and we will uh, be happy to set up a time and, and go in and, and you know meet with you, figure out you know what you're concerned about and, and see if a risk assessment makes sense for you to do right now. So we, um, we do have a question um, and, and absolutely, uh, you know, uh, book a strategy session with us, info.northstar-tg.com. Uh, you'll find our calendar, get some time, let's talk, talk through this. But um, I do have a question from one of the attendees and it is for assessments that you've done with law firms, what are some of the common issues that you found? Uh, you know, is there a theme that you're starting to see with, with law firms uh, or some of the issues that you've seen? Yeah, I mean, still, no matter which law firms, you know, I, I would say any of them from small to midsize, we still don't see enough things in place. We, we still see the antivirus. Antivirus is like the common thing that we do see. So they are getting that right. But, you know, most antivirus can be disabled and bypassed, you know, very easily. So, so that's the biggest problem is that people put too much faith in that. Uh, and, and some of the other ones will have firewalls, you know, and, and it's very easy to bypass the firewall defenses. So really, we, we, we occasionally will come across a firm that's actually doing a few things right, but very rarely are they doing enough. You know, so I, I see I see too much reliance on antivirus, and and that's really just not not a strategy that you should rely on. And then, kind of a, a follow up question, Dan, to that is um, of the things that you do find in your um, cybersecurity risk assessment, how long does it usually take to fix those problems? Sure. Yeah. I mean, really, it depends on the firm's uh, size. You know, but I, I would say, you know, we can fix most things within a week. Uh, you know, if the firm's really big and we have a lot of locations, you know, it's really just how quickly can we get access to those systems and, and those people? Um, you know, if we can, if we can, you know, get that going quickly, you know, most things can be done within a week to a month. Um, it's just really a, a matter of getting access to a lot of those things. You know, a, a lot of times, you know, key players in the firm might be on vacation for a week, you know, right. so we, we can't implement something because we got to wait till they get back, you know, but uh, we can usually wrap it up pretty quickly. And we, we are 24 seven. So we do work around the clock and, and get these projects wrapped up pretty quickly. What does it cost Dan usually to get an assessment? Again, that depends on the size of the firm. Uh, but we have uh, prices, you know, for let's say you're a solo attorney, we can we can do that for 500, you know, and it scales up from there. Seems like a common question when we work with lawyers to answer it. It depends, right? So I think yeah. it's a big one too. <laughs> um, 
Another question. So uh, we already have IT. Can that person work with a third party assessment or is that not recommended? Oh, yeah. We, we have a lot of customers that have in-house IT or, or, you know, so, yeah, we, we can definitely be a third party to that. If you want to keep your IT person, you know, we, we have some arrangements where we handle the security for a company or a law firm and uh, their IT person, you know, handles the IT part of it. Awesome. Any other questions at all? Um, so again, uh, highly recommend you go out to info.northstar-tg.com, book a, a, a cybersecurity strategy session and absolutely free, no obligation. Uh, you know, let's just talk about what, what your, um, what your risk mitigation plan is and kind of how you handle your own risk at, at your firm. Love to talk more. Um, Dan, any closing comments or nuggets of information or correcting my speech? Yeah, no, I just want to, I just wanted to also say, you know, when it comes to the things that we typically find, you know, maybe they, they may or may not have antivirus and, you know, only, you know, probably less than 20% of the law firms that, that we do a risk assessment for even have cyber liability insurance. So, you know, that's, that's kind of a scary place to be in if you're relying on your antivirus and you don't have cyber liability insurance. Well, Dan, I mean, that we, we worked with that, that organization that handles leasing, right, for equipment. And that those two, those two points hit home. Number one, they had an antivirus that was disabled by the bad guys, right? And two, they did not have cyber liability insurance. Yep. So... Yeah, I mean, let's just talk about it. Um, reach out to us. Uh, you know, we both want to help as much as we can. Um, but uh, yeah, any anything else, Dan? Or no, I think that's it. Thank awesome. you all for attending. We really appreciate you being with us. Yeah, thank you, everybody.